All right, so I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little off put by the fact that these kind of videos are getting thousands of likes and views across social media and seeing it every now and then would have been weird to me too, but because it's been showing up on my timeline so much over the past year, it's starting to freak me out a little bit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. So we're familiar with platforms like TikTok for being the app that promotes videos with dances to trending songs, DIY tutorials, and comedy, right? Now, those examples can and have garnered millions of views across the app, giving many people behind those accounts a huge following, which could lead to other opportunities. Now, when it comes to who exactly gets these big followings and nice opportunities, it's clear to a lot of people that a certain type of person can get them. And I mean, quite literally, people with white lighter skin tones are the ones pushed most in the algorithm i personally don't find myself being on tiktok for too long and it's mostly because i'm just not all that amused with what i see on there especially what i'm about to get into i think one of the biggest turnoffs for me was in 2020 when there was a campaign to give jalea Harmon the credit she deserved for creating the platform's biggest dance trend the renegade and to little avail by the time people started to know who she was the damage had already been done and i feel like the height she could have reached as a creative was stifled by her being overshadowed by people doing her dance getting the views but not giving credit and she wasn't the only one before and after her other dances curated by black creators would go viral on the platform but it was always hard for the credit to be attributed back to them there was a whole black tiktok strike in 2021 where black creators spread the word and advised others in the community not to post original dances to see how far things would go and i was here for it but lately a lot of people have been exposed to particular content from black creators that, that don't show them or the community in the best light now, I don't think any of us are foreign to seeing a person of color compromising themselves to contribute to a stereotype for a couple clicks and views. Particularly what inspired this video was how much I noticed all the race jokes and stereotypes being played into by particular groups were getting a lot of circulation. Significantly more than the other content that person made or just in general on the platform. Minstrelsy is a trope of comedians normally white men in blackface, but typically entertainers presenting songs, jokes, portraying negative racial stereotypes. Many have attested it to being one of, if not the first, example of how American pop culture exploited and manipulated the black people and culture to entertain and benefit the target audience, white people. And though this level of offensive mockery coming from non-black people is definitely a big issue and something I'd love to address in more depth, this time I want to focus on the black influencers I've seen doing this. A few TikTok users I can think of in regards to this are Big Guru, formerly known as The Dancing Gorilla, Yeti Gang TV, also known as Chicken Boy, and Zoppo TV, who also had his page deleted but made a new one and has since been re-uploading his content. Now, if you scroll on TikTok or Instagram reels long enough, you've probably stumbled across all of these guys at least once because the amount of shares they get is insane. If you aren't familiar, Big Groove, real name Clive Ibizubi, is a fitness influencer who got his start in being a social media personality in 2022 when he began posting dance videos on TikTok. In these dance videos, the grown man would film himself dancing in public settings such as restaurants. Because of his obviously offensive internet alias, he received a lot of backlash and would inevitably change his stage name to something more appropriate, not only because of the feedback, but most likely for a broader repeal. Many people who've seen his content have chopped it up to being things like corny, cringy, co anyway. Let it be known, I've never seen any of his content on his personal page. I was only aware of it because of how many times people reshared the posts around social media. And even the reshares got millions of views. So just imagine how many he got originally. In one of those videos, he actually did a joint collab with another TikToker that does similarly cringy content known to many as chicken boy he makes food related content based around his overreaction to eating any meal which yeah it's pretty over the top to say the least elijah smith known as yeti gang tv on most platforms has found himself with millions of followers across social media ever since he found his niche to me the way he does his content is very reminiscent of those videos with people spending a lot of money to make a meal but using too much of something which ends up wasting the food and if you look at any of his honest comments you can see that nobody really likes when he acts this way people are telling him to you know just eat the food and move on now with zoppo tv i'm a little torn because most of his content does not center around him making a fool of himself more so the reactions of other people i'd put him in 
in the category of those content creators that ask random strangers the most wildest questions. And that's basically the entertainment. But if you take a look at not only his pinned videos, but also his stats overall, the videos that he made that had non-black people saying the N-word eclipse any other content he makes. Even when his page got deleted and he re-uploaded those original videos, they still got more views than the new content he was making. And the same thing goes for the other guys I mentioned. I have not seen any of them replicate the viewership doing anything else besides the cringy content. And I don't think that they ever will. When we think about why so many people find these kind of videos entertaining or funny, I feel like we have to get into the origins. Many see Thomas Dartmouth Rice as the blackface pioneer with his most notable works being when he played characters that mocked black people such as Jim Crow by putting on disguises to resemble their features and imitated AVE. He was a struggling actor for a while and he didn't get his big break until he started putting on these shows. And of course he wasn't the only case. Minstrel shows were put on across America featuring many white actors in blackface and even actual black performers who would collectively tour around in different cities. Minstrelsy in general was at its peak during the 19th century and would slowly die out in a wide scale coming into the 1900s. With the last known televised showing of any blatant minstrelsy being the British television show, The Black and White Minstrel Show. The portrayal and mocking of black figures weren't by any means uncommon in the media. There just wouldn't be as much outrage for it because back then the everyday person didn't have a platform to voice their opinions on it. Fast forward to the early 2010s when the internet is growing exponentially and sites like Twitter, Vine, YouTube, and Instagram are taking over the young people's attention. In general, during these times, people could get away with a lot more of their dark humor because there wasn't as much moderation for people saying offensive, hateful things. A lot of these websites were stoned to come up themselves. With Vine especially, many people found success making content that was dark, edgy, or based in shock value. King Bach is probably one of the most well-known that came from the platform. He would do a lot of collabs with other prominent Vine stars at the time, like Logan Paul, Hannah Stocking, Rooney Mancuso, and a lot of their videos played on the stereotypes of their races. Bach also always wore a pick in his hair as well. I guess as a way to prove his blackness to his viewers, but to be honest, most people might look at it as another form of mockery. Since then, he's doing more general audience friendly content. He hasn't seen that same success, but people on the internet like Bach undeniably made people a lot more comfortable to continue using minstrelsy as a way to go viral on social media. And with non-black people running the algorithms to these platforms who probably find this just as funny, they're going to continue pushing it onto the targeted audience. I want to make this very clear because I understand why black people might make certain jokes on our behalf. We laugh to deal with most of our trauma. That's the case for a lot of people. But when it comes to making these jokes anywhere outside your inner circle of like-minded fellow black people, for me personally, I'm not trying to set myself up. On TikTok, I noticed that in the comments of these videos, people are egging it on and expressing that they find the racist jokes funny out loud. There are these comments of that old white man is racist stereotype that shows up nearly under every one of those videos. I stopped liking those ones. Black people weren't the majority of the ones making the joke. Everyone started to get in on the joke and it started to come off as projection. Something else that I noticed with the internet is that anytime they deem something as funny or entertaining, they cling on to it. And it's really hard for people to let go of that thing, especially if they don't find anything wrong with it. And then when people try to explain to someone who shouldn't be a part of the joke that they shouldn't be making that joke they'll be told they're sensitive or they can't take a joke and it's not that deep and the internet has become this really desensitized apathetic place with little to no remorse for other people and so instead of recognizing that what they're doing may be offensive to other people they brush it off for some quick laugh amongst their friends i know for a lot of non-black youtubers that were making that shock value edgy humor type of content in the early days of the internet had a scarily solid fan base of subscribers that were willing to defend their faves by any means over dropping the hard R multiple times in the comedy skit. Even to this day, when those same YouTubers are being held accountable for their actions, you're dismissed by their fans who don't deem it as an issue. 
I think for those who are too ignorant to understand the logic behind why these jokes you're making on another group of people's behalf is bad can be summed up to simple house rules. If you go to someone else's house and you do something to disrespect them and their property, they're likely going to give you the chance to stop. And if you refuse, then you'll likely be considered a trespasser because you'll most likely be asked to leave at that point. Overall, I think being considerate of your own digital footprint is very important when you step into this kind of space because, yeah, you can make the kind of content that makes black people the beloved joke in the worst way possible. But the moment that doesn't work for you, then what's your next move? You've compromised yourself for a demographic that finds your jokes funny, sacrificing the people that will support you the long way. And because of your past, I doubt there'll be a lot of sponsorship deals coming your way. And this goes without saying, but the more y'all make these jokes and thousands of people are getting on it, the more casual the racism gets. And by casual, I mean constant. As in, your non-black friends are calling you all kinds of derogatories on a regular basis as a quote-unquote joke because you open the door for them to get comfortable saying it. And then the biggest thing most people don't realize, especially when it comes to your non-black friends and peers saying the N-word around you, is that the moment that they get pissed off at you for anything and you start going back and forth with each other casual is going to become real personal and i just personally refuse to let it get to that point the boondocks is such a good show in the sense that it speaks on so much that happens within the black community and so of course given the topic of discussion i can't talk about minstrelsy without bringing up the character uncle ruckus people who watch the show know his backstory they know how he acts but for those who don't think of him as one of the biggest ops to black people while being black season three's the story of jimmy rebel is definitely one of boondocks's leading controversial episodes so much so and i kid you not they completely removed the episode from streaming services due to quote the appearance of a famed racist country singer and when asked about it a representative for adult swim told the daily beast that the episode is not part of our streaming deal and added that the episode is permanently retired due to cultural sensitivities jimmy rebel is a direct depiction of johnny rebel who was a real singer who made racist songs in support of confederacy white supremacy and overall anti black and race hate. The episode opens up at a redneck bar in a presumably predominant white area in 1967, where we're introduced to an upcoming country singer nervous about performing in front of the patrons. When he first gets to the mic, we can clearly see that nobody in the bar is feeling him. Everyone is just looking at him with judging eyes, not a smile on their face as they wait to get the chance to boo him off. It's not until this man opens up his mouth to sing a song that lists as many derogatory black slurs that you can think of that the crowd has a change of energy as they clap and cheer to the music. The rest of the episode basically goes over how much Uncle Ruckus appreciates Jimmy Rebel as a racist country singer. So much so, it comes off as romanticization and envy for his white counterpart as he proceeds to dedicate so much time to him. He was so inspired, Ruckus even starts to write his own song, sending the songs through mail to Rebel's label in hopes to catch his attention. He does, and once Rebel Rebel comes to his house in search of the real Uncle Ruckus. Ruckus lies about his identity in order to not disappoint his favorite artist. These two spend a lot of time together, like a lot. And once Rebel finds out that Uncle Ruckus was lying, he decides to make music with him anyway. Now, at this point, everyone from Rebel's hometown disapproved of this idea. No one liked the idea of a black man and a white man making music together because the basis of their music thrived off of the pure hatred of black people. Once Rebel performs the song he wrote inspired by his relationship with Ruckus, he receives immediate backlash from the entire crowd of people from the same bar he first performed in. Ruckus being the only one in the room appreciating his work, glad that after all of his actions, he was able to gain the approval and the friend and friendship of the white man. What's funny is that Rebel actually admits that people don't want to see him perform with Ruckus not because of his action, but because of his skin color and also that regnecks are stupid. And then Ruckus doesn't like him anymore because of it. it. It was crazy. But this kind of episode didn't really surprise me because Uncle Ruckus as a character not only serves as comedic relief for that certain demographic, but also as a huge representation of the people in the black community that are willing to sacrifice their own image for the approval and acceptance of other communities that most times want nothing to do with them. Because getting to how Uncle Ruckus even had the potential of getting a record deal, what the foundation of him and Rebel's relationship was, because it's very telling. And I think the reason why a lot of these content creators who make this minstrelsy type of content don't really address it head on is because they understand what they're doing. And if the comments don't tell them, then they definitely understand that's probably an issue 
within themselves, but they just don't want to tell it out loud. Let it be known the song that they had from the episode would, to no one's surprise, go viral on TikTok, getting thousands of likes from users who I'm sure aren't all black. The thing about this kind of content, because it's been around for such a long time and it's still being made, it's hard to say whether or not it'll continue to be prevalent. Shock value, edgy humor, seems to get a lot of attention no matter where you are on the internet because a lot of these people who find these jokes funny really want to say a lot of these jokes themselves but can't because they don't want to reap the consequences of what comes with it something i always pondered was that the people making this kind of content probably lack the creativity or personality really to really captivate a large audience so they resort to their peaked high school level humor in order to gain a following and then profit off of it and i mean i can't be lying about this because just recently, iDubbbz came out with an apology video stating how he at some point felt like the content that he used to make back in his early days of YouTube kind of overshadowed his own confidence of, you know, his creativity. He felt like he couldn't make anything else but the content he was making. Otherwise, he couldn't captivate the same kind of audience because guess what? He lacked a certain sense of creativity and the intelligence for him to make something that was better than that. And so he ultimately felt ashamed of that kind of content as he should. And he made an apology video. And I just hate that what he did still left the mark. And he attracted an audience of genuine racist um, to his platform, even though that wasn't his intention. That'd be the thing about a lot of these jokes y'all be making since you think everybody's just joking, but not everybody's joking is no way. Is no way. So thanks to apps like TikTok and Instagram, anyone in the world has the chance to become a viral sensation off of anything that is considered entertaining to most people. Once you find your thing on the internet, most people think it's great to stick by it because if it worked the first time, then more views should come every other time you do it. But when that niche comes at the expense of your own image and the people you represent, is it worth the come up? I hate that this is one of the kinds of content that blows up the most, but that just goes to show what a lot of people find entertaining in this day and age which is unsettling to say the least. I don't know why I'm seeing so many videos on my timeline like this. I'm not purposely seeking this kind of content out. Admittedly though, like I said, I did find some of these jokes funny at first, but then when everyone who wasn't us started coming in droves to make those same jokes, I naturally tuned out. I'm not telling black creators how to run their page. I'm not telling anyone how to run their page, but I'm just asking y'all to be more aware of what you're doing and how it looks outside of your own perspective. I want to make it very clear that though the minstrelsy has proven to work for some people for a moment, it can only get you so far when you're trying to establish a strong brand. No one's going to take your black self seriously when you're on TikTok jumping up and down to monkey sound. If you feel like you have to make content that rides the wave of what's trending, just make sure you're not setting yourself up. I personally try to be very mindful of everything I put out on social media. I never know what's going to blow up and whatnot, so I make sure the content I make is, well, not this. Black people have proven time and time again that they are the foundation behind a lot of what we see in entertainment, so I know for a fact that some of y'all, a lot of y'all, can be more creative than this. Nothing wrong with joking about your own traumas and personal experiences, but again, it's a little weird when someone else that doesn't look like you speaks on your experience as if they lived your life in your shoes. Granted, there are black people who don't really care if they're called the N-word by someone that's not black, and though I don't agree, they still have the right to allow that person to do whatever and say whatever they want to them. Also, it's crazy that once the people who aren't black feel like they've gained the permission to say certain things and speak for black people, they fight for it with their life. This is something that like is like a lingo. Like even if I want to stop saying it, I really can't stop saying it. Like I'm, I'm sorry. Like. It seems like it's something that is so normal, which is bad, but like it is what it is. Seeing the replies of a tweet Ari Fletcher made asking, why do a lot of Mexicans think they can say the N word was really sad to see, but also an eye opening moment for me. Of course, it's not just Mexicans who feel entitled to saying it. I mean, if you really want to get into it, it's a lot of Latinx slash Hispanic people, white, like I said, Asian, etc. And a lot of their excuses are that they grow up around black people. They grew up in certain neighborhoods where that was part of the vocabulary for a lot of people they knew. 
And because they're not pressed about what they say, they think it's okay and start to claim it as their own. Another thing is some of them always try and claim ancestry from generations way before their time just to claim any small percentage of blackness. It's crazy to see the lengths of what people will go to have what we have. At this point, I'm just like, if one of your parents ain't black, then for me, you just don't make the cut. Speaking of N-word passes, there's a dude out here promoting certified N-word passes on this page with a whole website and everything. I mean, man's is making actual money off this. Like, I can't, y'all don't take nothing serious. But as I scroll through some of his comments, some people are saying that they haven't received any package after their purchase. So there's a chance that this could low key be a scam. If it is, good for whoever's running the page. But that's all I really wanted to say on this topic. This video did take a little longer to put out than I wanted, but I really wanted to put it out because it's been on my mind for a fat minute. Let me know your thoughts and comments below about the topic or something else that you want to point out. How do you guys feel about these kind of jokes being made and if you feel like they should even be made at all? If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.